Well, hello, my friends, and happy Sunday. Look at this beauty we're creating today. Oh, it's so good. Here are the supplies that we're using. And here are the four stencils that we're using that will be on sale this week. So I started this piece with a MDF board that I had used um, that didn't make the cut. And um, so I'm going to repurpose it. And I'm starting with some collage papers. And these are the vintage... Um, vintage floral book collage paper and then that's the that um, French market paper right there that is actually free in the resource library <clears throat> so you can grab that and I'm just using some random bits here and there and just kind of accentuating what's already there the texture on the base is fantastic. It's got some old paper towels and different things like that on it. So it's got all kinds of texture and I thought it would be perfect to reuse and try and make it beautiful. I'm putting everything down with my Liquitex matte medium and just kind of getting some pattern and some interest when I'm thinking about how I'm going to be painting this piece. So I'm starting out, I'm using all different kinds of acrylic. Um, but this is Arteza's Cold Gray, and oh man, do I love it. And I'm just, I'm doing, I'm mixing everything. Everything is a mixture. There's Payne's Gray that I just started using, but I'm mixing it with gesso. Because I want it to be real chalky, real um, mysterious feeling, and I'm working in a neutral color palette, and I'm using my Payne's Gray and my, this is um, Golden's Van Dyke Brown. I'm using those colors as my darks and then the, the um, other colors as my lights and working and really trying to um, get comfortable with um, working in a neutral palette. So you can see all of that texture just showing up. It is so fantastic. I love it. Love, love it. I love using my brayer to kind of get some unexpected um, design pattern texture. Now I'm just using some gesso in my fingers and I'm just smoothing everything out. And I, I'm, I'm keeping in mind where I might have the idea of my focal point, but not too much. I'm really just trying to focus on the background and make it beautiful. And then we go from there. So now I'm just kind of laying out where I want everything. Um, my table, my um, vase, all of that kind of thing. I'm kind of planning it. So I wanted a little bit of interest in that table just instead of just plain color. So I used my lace stencil to add just a tiny bit of pattern. And the lace was perfect because I thought about a lace tablecloth. I'm really kind of just grunging it up and smoothing it out a little bit pushing it back so that it kind of folds right into the piece. So now I'm going to sketch out my vase and I'm in this piece I'm actually running the vase off of the table so I don't have a lot of shadow or anything like that. But um, So now I'm planning out where my flowers are going and I love using stencils as my guide because I can quickly get an idea of where things are going and you're going to see my hand kind of moving back and forth in like a direction and that's me just kind of seeing like okay if a flower was folded over or bending over how, what would the direction be of that flower head and so I'm, I'm concentrating on where the flowers are facing and how they will look in the vase. Now I wanted some pinks in there but I didn't want them to be too visible so I cut out some middle flowers some flowers and then just put them down on top of my already stenciled flowers and then went back over them. Then I grabbed two of the flowers from that same vintage plant book that I used in the backgrounds and used those and I love integrating collage um, elements into my pieces. I love it. Um, it helps the process go faster. And so now I'm just going to um, work on my vase here a little bit and I've grabbed some gesso and some deco art crackle paint and just really um, getting the shape of that vase and that crackle paint adds just the right yummy goodness. So 
integrating the collage papers into the piece um, can take a little bit of work but not as much as it would take for me to create the actual flower and I love being able to paint over it and still see the collage elements and have there be like how did how did she get that like that so I will paint over those a little bit and just really push them into the piece and make them feel painted now I'm just taking the stenciled um, flowers that I have and painting over them and what the stenciling does is it gives me the form and the feel of the flower it gives me the shape and then I can accentuate from there it helps me see the piece and that is half of the battle when you're painting is being able to see how things will look and I'm following the lines of the stencils and just accentuating them a little bit I use the roses and peonies and the large rose stencil and the flower silhouette stencil for the flowers and those will all be on sale this week I'm using a mixture of gesso of Van Dyke Brown, some of that cold gray, I'm mixing them all together, um, making sure to have contrast from, from the background so that those flowers will stand out. And just like this um, one, that the large rose that I'm painting right now, I paint in, I just go right over the already stenciled area and then in the places that are not stenciled that's my shadow so I can add in the dark in there and now I'm just lightening up those petals and really making them feel painted and um, part of the piece now I'm just trying to get my um, shape like making sure that the flowers make sense and how they're sitting and facing and that kind of thing so I'm adding my stems and I'll go back over those in just a little bit but I'm trying to get an idea to make sure that it all makes sense I'm using a general's charcoal pencil and I'm going to sketch in some start uh, sketching in some leaves and I use the gesso to give it a real good base because I'm going to come back over it with the green um, but I wanted to get a good base for those leaves so that they would really show up I'm using Van Dyke Brown, a mixture of Van Dyke Brown and gesso on the stems. And I'm just going to paint in my leaves where I feel like they, they would be naturally kind of coming out, popping over the vase. So I'll come back in and finish the leaves. I got distracted. I'm like, hmm. And part of the reason why I move from one area to the next is because I need to see. I need to see what it needs. Like if it needs more leaves or not. And the only way that I can really do that is when I start seeing the contrast between the different areas. And so that's why I switched over to the table area and started painting there. And again, I'm coming back up here to um, really kind of darken the edges make sure that I've got enough contrast in the background and interest and then it helps me see what else I need so now now that I've got those colors in it helps me understand okay I need these to be the leaves to be darker or lighter or I need more leaves or less leaves or what what it is I actually need to help the fit the piece feel cohesive I'm using Lucas's um, chrome green and olive green and, and I'm mixing it with a little bit of that Van Dyke Brown to give it kind of that grungy kind of dirty feel Of course, I'm going to add some highlight and some more gesso on there to add some depth and dimension.
just adding some highlights and lowlights, filling in some of the middles, um, really adding the contrast to the piece to make it come alive. And I'm staying all within those same colors that I used throughout the piece. Now I'm going to come back in and add just some highlights with my palette knife and some gesso just to really add some interest and some light to it. So all the supplies are going to be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. I had a kind of a funny line there from my sketching out of the table area and so I'm just kind of filling that in and making it feel a little bit better. Adding a little bit of color and, and um, shade to the vase so that it's got some, again, some interest and in depth. I hope you stick around for the conversation at the end. It's a good one about the quote that inspired this piece and finding beauty and how beauty is different for each of us. So I'm going to shade around everything, everything. And that what that does is that pulls that um, object or flower or vase away from the background, gives it some depth, gives it some dimension, makes it pop off the page. And that's about it, my friends. Very simple, love using my stencils as my guide. It helps the process go so quickly. This piece actually came together very quickly in about 45 minutes or so from start to finish. So not too bad. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, um, I hope that you subscribe and like and leave any comments or questions that you might have and I will do my best to get back to you and again stick around for the conversation at the end and I will see you next week Alright lovies, there she is. Happy Sunday to you. Um, I just love, I'm in this place where I'm really working on getting comfortable with creating neutral, in neutrals, um, subtle colors. Um, I've always done kind of a grungy brown, so, um, that kind of colors, always, always. Um, <clears throat> but I want to create more neutral with with all different like abstracts, florals, all those kinds of things. So I'm working on a series, and this is going into one of the one of the series that I'm doing. And it takes a rethinking. But anytime that you want to get better at something, you just have to do it. And there's just always the learning curve or whatever. And there's always the pieces that are just not so great. Um, so anyway, that that's um, kind of the the move with the neutrals and reusing the backgrounds. Oh, this one worked out perfectly. Um, 
I have tons and tons of backgrounds that just never make it to the, fi the finish line. Um, so I'm just trying to repurpose all of those. And some of this background here had some paper towel and that kind of thing. And oh man, it just is so grungy good. It's just yummy, yummy, yummy. So I went over everything throughout the video. Um, I did want to let you know that I have, so I, I have a couple of pages of words in the resource library. This one is just in general like um, stop dreaming, start doing, when it rains, look for rain, rose, gratitude, seek adventure, just those kinds of words. So this is free to you in the resource library if you would like it. And I just, I love these sheets because I can just cut them out and use them. Um, and then the, let's see, stencils that I use today will be on sale. Um, the collage packs will be listed, all that stuff. So I think I went over that in the video. So anyway, um, the quote down here says, and I saw this this week and it kind of just kind of went together. I love that. It's how it always happens, how I'm feeling or what's working or, you know, what's going on in my life. And then I'm searching for whatever I need and I find the quote and it's like, yes, there it is. But it says, everything has beauty, but not, but not everyone sees it. And I thought, well, how do how, I love the quote? And I'm like, where does that apply in my life right now, in this day, in the season that I'm at? And um, I I get so busy and so focused on what I'm doing, and um, the business and life is super. It's just the season right now for me, and um, I forget that there is beauty in everything, even in the hard stuff. Even when I'm complaining about whatever it is in the business, someone else who hasn't gotten there yet says, you're so lucky. And so there's beauty in all of it. I just, I just haven't seen it. Um, in, in struggles, in relationships, in all of those things. And I write on the blog that um, we can't see the beauty in situations when we're in it usually. I mean, I know I can, I'm speaking from experience, but when we're past it, we can. And my my practice right now is to find the beauty in the middle of the whatever it is that you're in. Whether it's a hardship or growth or trying to learn something new or whatever it is. I'm trying to really be present to notice <clears throat> the beauty that's happening in the moment. And I wrote down some of the beauties that happen in that has happened in my life, in my situations, like compassion or a hug from someone or a new painting or a card in the mail. Oh man, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a card in the mail right when I needed it. And we don't, we, we are thankful for it, but we don't often pause and really say what a, this is the beauty in this moment. My things are hard, but this was a beautiful thing. Or um, a new discovery, learning new things. Um, they're hard, 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 and it takes us out of our comfort zone. But what a privilege we have to be able to choose to learn new things. Helpful words from people. Oh, my gosh. Um, encouraging words. Um, a therapist appointment. <laughs> There's beauty in that. When I, and I know it sounds crazy, but I can walk out of an appointment with my therapist um, and feel like I can conquer the world. And I went in feeling like I just need to get some clarification. And um, seeing the beauty in all of that, in a dinner with a loved one or a friend or anyone, just having dinner, gosh, for that matter, and a chance to rest. And that's, a chance to rest is my beautiful moment right now because I'm super busy and I've been sick and all of those kinds of things. And having the chance to, uh, you know, you plopped, I plopped down exhausted and um, I feel guilty for it. And then I have to, I'm really trying in the moment to say, this is a beautiful thing that I get to take one hour and just rest. And so um, I really want you to find the beautiful moments in your life. They're there and they're different for everyone. What I might think is beautiful 
you might not and that's okay and it's the same thing with art what I deem as beautiful not everybody does and that's okay we have to find our own beautiful moments in everything that we do and um, I'm so working on that in my own life <clears throat> and trying to really be mindful of all of the beautiful wonderful things that I have to be grateful for because when I do that then I see them more often and then I it, my attitude changes and everything changes when that happens so my loves find your beautiful things and really really be grateful for them even if they're little tiny even if it's in the hardest parts of your days your life your season there are so many beautiful moments in those in those things in that season all right loves i hope you have a wonderful sunday and um, you find your beauty and you get some rest and i hope that you always always know that you are loved <laughs>